Hey friends, welcome to this session of Healing Talks. I'm Chad Gonzalez. We're so excited to be with you tonight. Got some great things we're going to share with you. Uh, first of all, I just want to let you know if you haven't listened to uh, this month's episode of the Supernatural Life podcast, you need to check it out. We spent a little bit of time talking about uh, my last trip to Kenya where I went with the intention. We sat down and interviewed uh, some former witch doctors that are there in Kenya and just um, just confirmed a lot of things been, that I've been seeing in Scripture. Just very interesting to hear it from from their perspective, uh, from their former life and things that they were going through and seeing. So I'd encourage you to go check it out. And we're going to do a part two to that uh, coming up as well. So check out the Supernatural Life podcast. Also, those of you that go to our YouTube channel, if you haven't subscribed there, if you would, please click that button there. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. That way uh, you get notice of all the new videos that go on there. And so you don't miss out on any new content that we post. Uh, plus, we it just really helps us in getting the word out even more uh, there on YouTube. Same thing as fa on Facebook. If you go to our Facebook page, our ministry Facebook page, if you haven't uh, liked that and followed that, if you would do that, we'd very much appreciate it. Also, wherever you're watching from, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, if you would put in there, uh, let us know your name, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, there's a Bartels from Oregon, uh, Gene and Tennessee. Thanks for joining in. We've got uh, here on YouTube, Anna from Nashville, uh, Cadesti in California, Hope in Nigeria, Adrienne in Pennsylvania. Good to have all of you guys with us tonight. And uh, some more of you that are tuning in. Really cool to have you all with us. Uh, the last thing I wanted to let you know is that uh, we are in the midst of working on our schedule for next year, for 2022. And we're already pretty much filling up a lot of the spring and into the summer. But if you if you pastor a church, you're on staff at your church, if you guys would be interested in us coming and doing a conference for you or just doing like a healing academy training, because I love doing that. I mean, I love the services, uh, but I really love sitting down and just those those smaller group settings, just real informal and just doing some teaching and some training along these lines. We love doing that. And we'd be very much in, interested in doing that if it works out as far as time schedules and stuff. So if you'd be interested in that, just send us an email uh, at info at chadgonzalez.com. Uh, or you can just go to the website and there's a, a, a link up there as far as ministry requests. You can do that. And uh, oh, the last thing I wanted to let you know, I forgot about this one. So we're doing this special thing uh, for Christmas and closing out the end of the year. If you've never taken part of the Healing Academy, we're going to do something special. Uh, I believe that for the digital version uh, for the Healing Academy, it's normally $35. Uh, we're going to have that knocked uh, more than half. It's going to be 15 bucks for the digital version. If you've never partaken of it, uh, starting tomorrow, you can go on there. And from tomorrow uh, through the end of the year, so December 31st, you can go on there. You can subscribe. Uh, to the digital version of Healing Academy Volume 1 or Volume 2 for only 15 bucks. And if, you, if you've done that but you'd like to give that to a relative of yours or a friend, someone you think that that would be beneficial, you can do that as well. Uh, all we have to do is make sure that we have their email so that they can log in uh, with their email and access that. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out starting tomorrow, from tomorrow through December 31st, a uh, digital package of uh, the Heathen Academy, Volume 1 or 2, only be 15 bucks. That's a steal. And that gets you all the videos, gets you the study guide, gets you all the ebooks, all of that great stuff. So, praise the Lord. Hey, we've got uh, Wendy. Hey, Wendy from Louisiana. Jopheth from Saba, Lame, Virginia. How you guys doing? Good to see you on here. Who else we have? Let's see. On YouTube, we've got Iowa, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. We've got Lisa there. Hey, Jane. Jane joining us from the UK. We love the UK. We're really hoping to get over there to London uh, here in the next couple of months. We just saw where they just dropped the quarantine a bit even more. So we're looking to uh, get that in there. Uh, we've got some other international trips coming up. To We're going to be in Nagaland, India in March and going back to Kenya in uh, May. So, hey, let's get into 
uh, tonight's uh, message. You ready? This is some good stuff. I I've been chewing on this, thinking about some of these things over the last few months and had a, a really good conversation uh, last night with one of our partners and just really stirred me up even more. I was in Salt Lake City yesterday and had some time on my hands just to do some, some reading and some studying and thinking about some things while I was in the airport. And I want to share some of those things with you tonight, if that's okay. So if you have your Bible, look over at Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 15. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over in them, triumphing over them in it. So what we see here is that when Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, right there in the pit of hell, he disarmed Satan. He took from him his power and authority over us. And this is why when you see Jesus standing before the disciples, before he, he goes up, he tells them, all power and all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And then he gives it unto us when he says, go, go into the world, preach the gospel, and all these signs and wonders and miracles that will follow. But Jesus stripped Satan of the authority that he had over our life. Uh, the Passion Translation, I, I like this. It says this. It's a little wordy, but it's good. It says, Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all of their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was no longer their prisoner, for they were his. I love that. So good. So again, we see... Jesus, he stripped them. He took away the authority that he had, that Satan had. Well, what we find from that is that if Satan no longer has authority over us, then first of all, we know that Satan can't make us sin. Now, you know, back in the, back in the day, it was always a, a, a kind of a popular statement, popular saying that, you know, the devil made me do it. Well, if you're a Christian, the devil can't make you do anything. Why? He has no authority over you. He can't make you sin. He can't make you sin, right? I mean, you and I, we are the ones who are responsible for our actions. We're responsible for our thoughts. He can't make us do anything. All he can do is tempt us to sin. But this isn't our opinion. This is scripture. Romans chapter 6, verse 6 through 11. I'm going to read this to you of the New King James it says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin would be done away with, that we would no longer be a slave of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Notice this, we've been set free from sin. Sin no longer has authority and control over us. You can't say truthfully as a Christian, I can't control my temper. You can't say truthfully as a Christian, I can't control lying. You can't say truthfully as a Christian, I can't control you know, my actions, my thoughts. No, you and I do have control over those things because we have authority. We have authority over our thoughts, we have authority over our mind, and we have authority over Satan. Verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. So remember, when we died with Christ, we also were raised with Christ, Ephesians chapter 2. And as born-again believers, as born-again children of God, sin doesn't have control over us. We're, we're set free from the curse, set free from those things. Verse 8, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, he dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all, but the life that he lives, he lives unto God. Verse 11, likewise, you also consider yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So notice right here, Paul tells us we're dead to sin. Sin no longer has dominion over us. We're no longer a slave to sin, right? So when you're a slave, you have no control. But when you're a master, you're in full control. See, the roles were reversed when we got saved. We went from being Satan's slave to being Satan's master. We went from being told what to do. Now we are the one who tells him what to do. Not only that, but Paul tells us these are spiritual realities that happen, but in order for these things 
uh, to have an effect in your life, you have to do some considering that these things are true. In other words, you have to get your soul, your mind, you have to get your soul in line with the realities of your spirit. You have to see yourself for who you are and, and what you have. You have to see it from that perspective so that you can start to see the, the spiritual realities manifest in your physical life. So just right here, we see that we're dead to sin's control over us. And because of that, the only way that we could sin is for us to choose to, right? If you were driving down the road and someone cut you off, the devil is not the one who made you honk your horn and flip them off. No, you're the one. <laughs> that thought came, and you're the one who chose to think on that thought and act on that thought. The, but, but Satan cannot make you do anything. This is Satan's method of operation. This is his MO. Number one, through your physical senses. He does something out here in the physical. Everything always starts out here in the physical. The reason is, is because Satan wants you to, to tie yourself, to, to connect yourself, or you could say, become more conscious of everything out here in this physical realm. He's always operating in the physical realm because he wants you to stay connected to the physical realm. Something starts off here with our five physical senses. Either someone says something to you, uh, you know, you read something that someone wrote about you on Facebook, or you find out that someone unfriended you, you know, some of these goofy things. Something happens out here. And then what that leads to is a thought, an idea, a suggestion. Satan brings this thought that, you know, this person, they really, really wronged you. Or those people don't know what you've done for them. You know, those type of things. Those thoughts come. These thoughts. And then from that thought, or you could say that temptation, then it leads to your imagination. If you, if you don't take control of that thought and you begin to think about that, what you do is you begin to activate your imagination. And now you begin to think about what that person did to you and, and what their intention was and and all the good things that you had done for them and how you feel unappreciated and, and all of those things begin to happen. And have you ever noticed it happens in, in you know 4K? I mean it's just super high resolution and and you know there's there's ultra surround sound. You just start to remember everything that happened and you begin to see what happened and and I don't know if, if you've done this, I'm sure you have because I'll, I'll admit I have, especially when people have wronged me. If you allow your imagination to begin to go, you'll find yourself having a conversation or an argument with that person right there where you're seated. You, you start to get caught up in that moment that even if it happened 20, 25 years ago, 5, 10 years ago, your imagination is a very powerful thing. And isn't it interesting that if you do not control your imagination, then ultimately it's going to lead to some type of manifestation, some type of physical action out here that's going to bring about the sin. That's the way that it works. This is how sin takes place. James tells us this in James chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. He says, when you're tempted, don't ever say that God's tempting me. For God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and he's never the source of the temptation. Instead, it is each person's own desires and their thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into the darkness. Evil desires to give birth to evil actions, and when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. That's the Passion Translation of that. It's really, really good. Notice that it's never God tempting you. These thoughts, these temptations come... And their, their intent is to drag you into evil, to lure you into the darkness. And those evil desires, they give birth to action. They give birth to manifestation. Those imaginations start with temptations. So you have temptations, then you have imaginations, and then that leads what? It leads into manifestations. And that's how sin takes place. It's never the devil made me do it. No, the devil brings the temptation he brings the thought, the idea, the suggestion. And when you don't cast that thing down and take authority over it, it's going to open up the doors of your imagination. And, and you think about that long enough, and that's going to lead into manifestations. Well, so let's bring this over into the area of healing now. 
So if Satan no longer has authority over you, if Satan can't make you sin, well, and remember what Jesus said over there in Luke, uh, was it Luke chapter five when he talks about, we see the story about the paralyzed man and we see Jesus equating sin and sickness. And he said, which one's easier to say you're forgiven or to say you're healed? We see a, a, a very real connection there. But if Satan, if he has no authority over you and he can't make you sin, well, then we should think about this possibility that, well, Satan can't make you sick either. Now, Satan is a deceiver. He is a tempter. He's the father of lies. There is no light in him. He is full of darkness. And he, he's totally, absolutely evil. But as a Christian, if he doesn't have any authority over you, then how could he do anything to you except bring an idea, a suggestion, a temptation? What else can he do? Because remember, you and I, we're no longer his, his slave. We are the master. You know, remember what it says over there in Peter? It says that, you know, Satan, he goes about roaming around looking for whom he can devour. It doesn't say he can. He's looking for someone who will allow it. Isn't it interesting that when, when Satan took Jesus and he was tempting him in the wilderness, isn't it interesting that Satan didn't do anything to him? No, what was Satan doing? He was trying to tempt him. He was trying to deceive him. Why? Because Satan didn't have any authority over his life. Isn't it interesting that when you look at Adam and Eve in the garden, and when Satan is talking to Eve, he couldn't take that anointing from her. He couldn't make her sin. He couldn't do anything to her. Why? He had no authority in their life. So what was Satan doing? He was trying to bring deception, he was trying, trying to bring temptation. He was bringing these ideas, this, this deception, these thoughts, trying to bring these things to get her to do something. And as you read in Genesis chapter three, it says that she's sitting there and she's talking to the serpent. And at some point in that conversation, it says that, that, say, uh, that Eve's eyes were open and she saw that that fruit was good to eat. It wasn't that all of a sudden she saw it with her physical eyes. No, 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 no. Because she was look, standing there looking at the fruit the whole time. No, in her imagination, in her soul, all of a sudden she saw that fruit that at what point she saw was forbidden. All of a sudden, in, in the blink of an eye, now she begins to see it differently. She sees it as good. She sees it as the answer for the thing that she desires. And it was the great deception because Satan was telling her, if you'll do that, if you'll eat of that fruit, it'll make you like God. The problem was Eve already was like God. She was made in his likeness and his image. She just didn't know it. You could say just like that and according to Romans chapter six, she needed to do some considering of the reality that she was already like God. But Satan was trying to get her to, to use something physical to obtain something spiritual. Now take that statement and, and, and hold on to it for what we're about to go into. Think about this. Satan was trying to get her to use something physical to, to cause something uh, to happen spiritually. Think about this. So. When I was over there in Kenya last month, and I was talking to this one, this one guy, he's a pastor now, he pastors nine churches there in Kenya, but he was a former witch doctor, very high ranking witch doctor for over 30 years. And we were talking about meditation, we were talking about our dominion over Satan, and we were talking about sickness and disease. I specifically asked him to talk to me about sickness and disease from, from his perspective, operating over there as a witch doctor. And he told me, he made a couple of just really eye-opening statements. He said, number one, all diseases of Satan. And we understand that. I mean, that's scriptural. He said, all disease is of Satan. And he said, but Satan cannot do anything to you that you do not allow. He said, Satan has no authority over the Christian 
except for the authority that the Christian gives unto him. Well, that's just scriptural. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden, right? Satan had no authority over Adam and Eve. He had no authority until they, get, they gave him their God-given authority. They took the God-given authority they had and they turned around and gave it unto Satan. And that is when Satan gained legal authority. Yeah, but now, because of what happened on this side of the cross, we see Colossians chapter 2, Jesus stripped Satan of that. That authority that, that Satan got in the garden, Jesus stripped him of it. And then Jesus turned around and gave us our authority back. Through our union with Christ, we got the authority back. And so quite literally, Satan cannot do anything to us that we would not allow, either through ignorance or, or willingly, and for, and for most of us, it's just ignorantly, and, and ignorance is not a bad word. We're not saying anybody's stupid, but just not thinking about it, or not being aware, not knowing. We unknowingly so many times open up the door and allow him to have access because we gave him our authority. We gave him our authority. So here's my question for you, and it's this. Is it possible... Because tonight we're talking about we're talking about temptations and imaginations, and we see that this is the way that Satan causes us to sin because he has no authority over us. He can't make us sin. So what does he do? He brings up thoughts, ideas, suggestions, temptations, so that you will think about it. It will open up your imaginations and ultimately lead to manifestations. If he can't make you sin. And, and sin actually starts with a thought. Is it possible that sickness and disease actually begins with a thought? Now hear me out and think about this. The last time that, that, you, had a, that you sneezed or you woke up and kind of had some sniffles, was your first thought that came, oh, maybe I have a cold or maybe I have the flu or of course, you know, in this last uh, almost two years now, you have some sniffles or something, and that first thought is, oh, maybe I have COVID. Or, the, or you have some chest pains, and your first thought is, oh, maybe it's a heart attack. Maybe it's heart disease. You know, start having some heart palpitations. Or maybe you were in a public place and walked into a, you know, a restaurant or something like that, and you grabbed a door handle or you know, touched a knob or touched something that a lot of people touch. And the first thought was germs, germs, germs. You know, where, <laughs> where's the germex? Where's the alcohol? I got to hurry up and wash my hands. I don't want to get any germs. I don't want to get sick. You know, what you have, what about if you, maybe you had a history uh, of people in your family that had certain illnesses, certain diseases. And when you turn that age, then you automatically begin to think, those thoughts begin to come. Well, you know, I know that Aunt Susie, you know, when she was 45, you know, she had a stroke, you know, or, or Grandpa Joe, you know, when he, was, when he was 54, he was diagnosed with heart disease. And, you know, heart disease runs in our family. And, and now, you know, I'm in my early 50s and and I've been noticing some, some things starting to happen. You see what happens there? You, you, you feel something. You see something. You, 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 you hear something. And your imagination starts to kick into gear. And these thoughts start to happen. Is it possible that just as every sin begins with a thought, idea, or suggestion, is it possible that every sickness and disease starts with a thought, idea, and suggestion because Satan doesn't have any authority over you. He has to try to tempt you. He has to try to deceive you. And where is what realm is he operating in? He's operating out here in this physical realm. He's trying to bring, you know, in the area of, of sickness and disease, he tries to bring a pain. He tries to bring a bump, a lump, a scratch, you know, something out here to get you so conscious and so aware of this realm that you forget that you're a spirit being that you forget you're the righteousness of God in Christ, that you forget that God, the creator, lives on the inside of you, that you forget that the very life of God that raised up Jesus from the dead is on the inside of your spirit. You forget all those things because all of a sudden, I become very conscious 
of this realm right here. Why? Because Satan wants to keep you operating and attached, conscious, aware of this physical realm so that you can't access who you are and you can't subsequently access what you have. Because why? Our weapons are not physical. Our weapons are not carnal. You see it over in Corinthians. Our weapons are spiritual. But if I am carnally minded, if I am, if I am conscious of this flesh, I can't access who I am. Because all of a sudden I began to identify as just a normal, mere human being. I identify with the world. I identify with the curse. I identify with the sinner. Not that I think I'm a sinner, but I become so aware of what's going on out here, I just start seeing like a sinner and thinking like a sinner. You could say something happens out here and all of a sudden my eyes are open. I begin to see that maybe, just maybe, there's something wrong with me. Maybe I need to go to the doctor and get this checked out. And then we go to the doctor, and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. I'm just We're just talking here. But you go to the doctor to get some things checked out. And then the doctor comes back and says, well, according to the test, this is what you have, or this is what I think that you have. This is the prognosis. This is the diagnosis. Is it possible that most sicknesses and diseases are actually received in the doctor's office. I'm not saying because there's germs and stuff like that in hospitals, which there are, but I'm not saying because of that. I'm talking about your thoughts. Is it possible that when the doctor says, this is what I think that you have, is it possible that when that thought hits your head, that immediately your imagination begins to run in the wrong direction and you begin to think about the possibilities you begin to think about the things that you have gone through. You begin to think about the oh me's and, and the what ifs. And especially if it's something that we consider to be very, very serious. And you start to think about the finances involved and the treat, the possibilities of, of different treatments and, and all of these things. Our imagination begins to run wild. But what you have to remember is wherever your imaginations go, that's where your body is going to go. Wherever your imaginations go, it's going to produce manifestations. Is it possible that we actually receive the sickness, we actually receive the disease there in the doctor's office when they tell us this is what you have? Maybe it's just possible that before I, that, you know, in the process of getting there, it was just temptations. Just like Satan was bringing temptations, ideas, thoughts, suggestions in my mind to try to get me to sin. Is it possible that the things that, that I may be experiencing, is it possible it's just a temptation by Satan to try to get me to latch a hold, or you could say receive, the things out here in this physical realm simply from my thoughts, the thoughts, ideas, and suggestions that came my way, and, and instead of casting those things down, I allowed my imagination just to begin to run wild. And, and as soon as my imaginations begin to run that way, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but by faith, I received of that sickness. I received of that disease. I received of that diagnosis. And then, and this is where it just gets crazy if you think about it, then I walk away from there saying, well, now I know what I need to put my faith on. And so I'm going to put my, I'm going to work to build my faith up to stand against what I just put my faith on. Now, most of us wouldn't say that I put my faith on the fact that I had that disease, but let me tell you something. And I say that I try to say this with the most amount of grace and sugar and, and, and cherry on top as I, can, <laughs> as I can. I'm just being real here. These are the things I think about and these are things that I'm seeing and we've, we've got to be able to humble ourselves and just talk about these things. And I know it's very sensitive, but we've got to be able to talk about these things without getting offended. But is it just possible? Well, let me just put it to you like this. If you got a diagnosis from the doctor and you walked out of that office worried, fearful, concerned, saying, oh man, what are we going to do? Where are we going to come up with the money for the treatments? You know, what, what are my kids going to do if I wasn't around for them? If those are the thoughts that are going through your head, I'm going to be honest with you. You're not in faith in regards to healing 
at that very moment in time. If, the, if those are the thoughts that are going through your head and your body is reacting to that and you're getting emotional and you're getting flustered about it, you're not in faith. Why? Your mind isn't, let's just be honest, your mind is not on God. Your mind is not on the realities of who you are, united with Christ. Your mind is on the realities of the things out here. Your mind is on the realities of this body, like we've talked about in past sessions, where we've made this body to be just too big of a deal. <laughs> we've made it to be too big of a deal. Look, let, let me give you a couple of these things right here. Look, remember in James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, we read it. He said, instead, it's each person's own desires and thoughts that drags them into evil. I want you to see this now from the sickness side. We, we, we're okay with it on the sin side. But remember what Jesus said, sin, sickness, eh, same. Dealing with one is just the same as the other. How to get rid of one is just how to, the way to get rid of the other. Actually, when you get rid of the sin thing, you get rid of the sickness thing. And for you and I, when we received of Jesus Christ, he took our sin. Remember, he took our sin and we became the righteousness of God in Christ. So the moment I get born again, I'm right. I'm connected to life. I'm full of life. But the moment that thought, that idea, that suggestion comes that you might be sick, that you might have cancer, that you might have heart disease, uh, that you might, you might have uh, you know, kidney problems, that you might have COVID. The moment those thoughts come, what are they doing? Those thoughts, ideas, suggestions, those temptations, they're trying to lure me over into evil. They're trying to lure me over into the curse. Why? Because Satan has no authority over me. I have to give him authority. I have to give him access because he has none in my life. I am his master. He is my slave. Verse 15, evil desires give birth to evil actions. The imaginations, the evil carnal imaginations lead to evil carnal cursed field manifestations. And it says in the Passion Translation, verse 15, and when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. I, I'm, I'm at the point, I'm convinced that the majority of sicknesses and diseases for the Christian are received there in the doctor's office. Again, we are not saying anything critical towards modern medicine, technology, doctors, nurses, health professionals. We're not saying anything in, in regards of that at all. They endeavor to help people. What I'm talking about is when we walk into that facility, we walk into that office, and we begin to hear these things, and we begin to hear of their expertise and their opinions, we immediately, so many times, our imagination just and just begins to, to run wild with all of the negative possibilities. And I truly believe at that moment, that's when I receive of that illness. That's when I receive of that diagnosis. Because when I turn around and I walk out of there worried, concerned, anxious, I walk out of there calling, well, let's just be real honest here. When's the last time we walked out of the doctor's office, got a bad report, and we immediately start calling our friends, we immediately start calling uh, people that we trust and say, I need you to pray because this is, this is what's going on in my body. At that point, we've already accepted it. Now, we can, we can say it out of the other side of our mouth that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And we can say it out of the other side of our mouth that, you know, I don't receive that. But if our actions are showing something else and our emotions are showing something else, that's probably where your faith is at. Your faith is on this instead of who you are. I would dare say that, that a lot of people who dealt with the, the COVID stuff that are Christians and faith people, that the moment that they took the test, and I've had to take quite a few of those tests, the moment that they took the test and the test came back and said that they were positive, and we know there's been a lot of false positive tests, but the moment that that test came back as positive, well, people would say, well, I've got COVID. And, you know, we've been bombarded over the last two years We've been bombarded with, with knowing what the symptoms are and all this type of stuff. And so what happens with many, I've heard the same story with many people 
we're feeling great, we're feeling fine. Took the test, test came back positive. And that day, all of a sudden, they began to experience symptoms. Is it quite possible that there was nothing there until they saw it on paper and then all of a sudden they received of it? Why? Not that there was anything there, but what happened? I'm being told I have this. And when I say, well, darn, you know, I was feeling fine, but you know, I guess it's there, whatever, however you say it. At that moment, I received of it. You didn't have to say I receive it by faith. If, you're, if your thoughts, your imagination, and your emotions grabbed a hold of it, you grabbed a hold of it. And you just gave your authority away. But at the very same time, how you gave your authority away, you know what? You can take it back. And the very way that you opened up the door, you can close the door. How? Your imaginations. You take your imaginations that you allow to run wild on the negative side, flip that around and begin to use your imagination on the positive side. Instead of allowing your imagination to be over on the curse, allow your imagination to be over on the blessing. Spend time just sitting. I've gotten to where I used to be somebody I hated sitting still. And it was very hard for me just to sit still and just be quiet and just enjoy quiet time. Now, I've very purposely been doing that more and more, just spending time using my imagination and thinking, meditating, chewing on things. You need to, t if, you're, if you're in that spot where you've got some physical things that are going on in your life right now, I want you to remember this. Number one, as a Christian, as a believer, you're united with God. And because you're united with Him, the very life that flows in Him flows in you. Number two, Satan has absolutely no authority in your life. Satan can't make you sin and he can't make you sick unless you allow it. If, if we've opened up the door and we've allowed it, whether just through plain ignorance, whether we just didn't know or we just allowed the, the bigness of the news or the feelings or whatever to become so big to us that we kind of unknowingly uh, grabbed a hold of that, whatever the case may be, we just reverse it. We use our imagination that God gave us that imagination. We use our imagination and we begin to see ourselves well. We begin to see ourselves walking if up until that point you couldn't walk. We begin to see our, our hands moving when they couldn't move. Actually, you know, I, we just saw a report. It was a, a testimony on YouTube this morning where somebody was watching the, the last message that we did, uh, the service that we did at Reach Church in Sand Springs a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that message, I highly, highly, highly encourage you go watch that on YouTube. The title of the message was Fix Your Focus. And there was a, a woman that had had COVID and she was paralyzed on one side of her body. And she was watching that message and all of a sudden she sat up on her own. And she, she was paralyzed. And she was watching that and she sat up on her own. What, what were we talking about in that message? We were talking about righteousness. Getting your focus off of the curse. Getting your focus on the blessing. Getting your focus off of sin and sickness and getting your focus over here on righteousness and health and healing. Use your imagination to see yourself doing the things that you should be doing. I use my imagination a lot, especially before uh, we do a healing conference or service. I use my imagination and see myself, you know, see, see people getting up out of wheelchairs and blind and deaf people being healed. I've been using my imagination a lot here recently, seeing myself raising people from the dead seeing myself walking into uh, the, the hospital or, or the morgue and that person, you know, that dead body on that concrete slab and seeing that person being raised from the dead. I'm using my imagination for those things. Why? So that when I get to that place, whenever that does happen, whenever that incident does arise, I'm ready. And I've already conquered it in my mind so that when I'm there, I can conquer it in the flesh. Praise the Lord. Well, man, we went really long. Let me give you these last couple of scriptures and then we'll finish up here. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Notice the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not fleshy. A lot of, and I'm going to say this, I know I'm going to get flack for it, but I'm going to say it anyway because I believe it. A lot of us are trying to cure a spiritual problem with physical stuff. We view the weapons of our warfare as a pill 
or a vaccine. But friends, I'm telling you, all sickness and all disease, ultimately, it is of the devil. Sickness and disease, it is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing that affects and manifests in our physical body. We're trying to cure a spiritual problem with physical stuff. And that's why medications don't always work for every person, even though they may be dealing with the same situation. Why? Because it's not necessarily physical. Yes, they may be experiencing it. Yes, there are some things out here. Not deny, I'm not denying those things. But what I'm saying is disease is spiritual. Why? It's tied to the curse. The curse is not physical. The curse is what? Spiritual. Sin is what? It is not physical. It is spiritual. And, and Jesus said, you know, forgiveness and healing, hmm, they're both spiritual. They're both spiritual. I'm not knocking medication, not, not, not talking negatively about any of that type of stuff. You do what you feel like you need to do. I'm just saying us people that know these things, we have been looking at the weapon for our healing as being something physical. And in reality, the weapon is something spiritual. You know what it is? It's the life of God that's on the inside of our spirit. But we need to cast down those arguments, those thoughts, ideas, suggestions, and imaginations. We need to capture those things and say, no, I will not receive that. I don't care what they said. They're giving me their opinion. They're giving me their expertise, and I appreciate that. But I uh, live according to a higher level. I am not of this world. I'm dead to sin, and I am dead to sickness and disease. That has to be our attitude. I'm dead to the things out here. That COVID, it cannot touch me. Why? I'm dead to it. The, you know, whatever, whatever new variant that comes out, I'm sure they'll have another one you know, here in a few months. Whatever new variant comes out, I'm dead to it too. Everybody's freaking out about the new variants. Who cares? I'm dead to it. You're dead to it. You're dead to cancer. You're dead to heart disease. You're dead to you know, kidney and liver problems. You're dead to blindness and deafness. You're dead to those things. They cannot touch you. Why? We are no longer a slave to sin. We're no longer a slave to sickness and disease. We're no longer a slave to the devil. We are the master. We are the champion. We are the conqueror. We are the king. Remember, Jesus is the king of kings. Who do you think are the kings? You and me. He's the Lord of Lords. Who do you think are the Lords? You and me. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Likewise, you also consider yourself to be dead to sin, dead to sickness, but alive unto God. And finally, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, they set their mind on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is going to produce death. But to be spiritually minded will produce life and it will produce peace. Praise God. Look, I know what we're talking about tonight. It could be a little touchy. It could be a little sensitive. But friends, I'm telling you, it's high time that you and I humble ourselves and we, we, we put our feelings to the side and we start to do some meddling and we start to get into this thing and get this figured out. And I'm telling you, this is a major, major key our imagination, dealing with, with these thoughts, these temptations that come here because of something that I see here. Remember, Satan's trying to use your five physical senses to get you to become carnally minded. But what you and I need to do is we need to use our five spiritual senses, so to speak, and stay spiritually minded so we can combat the things that are trying to come against us. Why? Because we are not plugged into the curse until I decide with my soul, my mind, through my imaginations to plug into that and thinking that those things are normal for me and I have no other option except for the same options that are available for the sinner. Praise the Lord. So God bless you for not getting mad at me or offended or anything like that. But I'm telling you, take these things, just think about it, chew on it. The more I've been chewing and meditating on this, I've been getting so excited about this because I'm seeing all the puzzle pieces starting to come together and, and make the full puzzle so that we can get results just like Jesus and do it on purpose, not only for ourselves, but also for all of those that we come in contact with in this world. Praise God. 
We love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a merry, merry, merry Christmas. And we will see you next Tuesday for another session of Healing Talks. God bless you guys. Remember in Christ, we always win. We'll see you next time.